So in um, quote-unquote quantum computer has subjective experience, you speculate that a process has to fully participate in the arrow of time to be conscious. Hmm. And this points to decoherence. Mm -hmm. If pressed, <laughs> how might you try to formalize this? So, so yeah, so I, I did write this kind of crazy essay uh, uh, five or six years ago that was called The Ghost in the Quantum Turing Machine, um, where I tried to explore a uh, position, uh, 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 you know, that's, you know that, that seemed to me to be sort of mysteriously underexplored in all of the debates about, you know, could a machine be conscious and so forth, uh, or, you know, uh, uh, which, which was, um, well, uh, you know, maybe, um, you know, like we, we want to be thoroughgoing materialists, right? So, you know, there's no uh, uh, sort of magical ghost that defies the laws of physics, right? The, you know, uh, brains are physical systems that obey the laws of physics just like any others. Uh, but there is at least one very interesting difference between a brain and any uh, digital computer that's ever been built. And that is that... Uh, uh, the state of a brain is not obviously copyable. That is, it's not obviously knowable uh, to an outside person well enough to predict what a person will do in the future without having to scan the person's brain so invasively that you would kill them. Okay, and so there is a, a sort of uh, privacy or opacity, if you like, to uh, uh, a brain that there is not to, uh, you know, a piece of code running on a digital computer. Um, and, you know, so, uh, you know, there are all sorts of uh, uh, classic philosophical conundrums that uh, sort of play on that difference. You know, for example, um, suppose that a, you know, human level AI does eventually become possible. And we have, uh, you know, uh, you know, simulated people who are running, uh, 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 you know, inside of our computers. Well, uh, uh, um, you know, if if I were to murder such a person in the sense of deleting their file, is that okay as long as I kept the backup somewhere? You know, as long as I can just restore them from backup? Um, or what if I'm running two? Uh, uh, exact copies of the program, uh, you know, uh, 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 on, on two computers next to each other. You know, is that instantiating two consciousnesses or is it just really just one consciousness because there's nothing to distinguish the one from the other? Um, uh, so, uh, you know, could I um, uh, blackmail an AI to do what I wanted by saying, uh, you know, even if I don't have access to, to you as an AI, I'm going to say, if you don't give me a million dollars, then I'm just going to, you know, since I have your code, I'm going to create a million copies of, of the code and torture them. And if you think about it, you are almost certain to be one of those copies because, you know, there's far more of them than there are of you and you're all identical. So, you know, so there's all these like, you know, these puzzles that like philosophers have wondered about for generations about, uh, 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 I, the nature of identity, uh, you know, how does identity persist across time? Can it be duplicated across space? You know, and somehow in a world with copyable AIs, they would all become much more real. Uh, and um, so, uh, um, you know, so one, one point of view that you could take is that, uh, well, a, uh, uh, if I can uh, 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 predict exactly what someone is going to do, right? And I don't mean, uh, you know, just, just saying as a philosophical matter that, oh, I could predict your actions if I were a Laplace demon and I knew the complete state of the universe, right? Because, you know, I don't, in fact, know the complete state of the universe, okay? But imagine that I could do that as an actual practical matter, right? I could build an actual machine that would perfectly predict down to the last detail everything you would do before you had done it. Okay, well then, you know, in what sense um, do I still have to respect your personhood? I mean, I could just say, you know, I have unmasked you as a machine, right? I mean, you know, my simulation has every bit as much right to personhood as you do at this point, right? They're just, or maybe they're just two different instantiations of the same thing. So, um, um, uh, but, you know, another possibility 
Ukutsai, is that uh, maybe uh, what we like to think of as consciousness, you know, only resides in uh, uh, those sort of physical systems that for whatever reason are uncopyable. That, uh, you know, if you try to make a, a perfect copy, then, you know, you would ultimately run into, uh, well, the, the, what we call the no cloning theorem in quantum mechanics that says that you cannot copy the exact physical state of, uh, you know, a, a, uh, an unknown system for uh, uh, quantum mechanical reasons. Um, and uh, so this would uh, uh, suggest a view where uh, um, kind of personal identity is very much uh, bound up with, uh, well, with the, with the flow of time, right? With uh, sort of, you know, things that happen that are evanescent, right? That can uh, never happen again exactly the same way because the world will never reach exactly the same configuration. Uh, you know, a related puzzle uh, concerns, well, what if I... Uh, took your conscious, you know, took a, uh, an, an AI and I ran it on a reversible computer. You know, now, you know, uh, some people believe that any appropriate simulation brings about consciousness, you know, which uh, um, is a position that you can take. But now, you know, what if I ran the simulation backwards, right? And I can always do on a reversible computer. Uh, does this uh, uh, you know, what if I or what if I ran the simulation? I computed it, and then I uncomputed it. Now, have I caused nothing to have happened, or uh, did I cause one forward consciousness and then one backward consciousness? Whatever that means, did it have a different character from the forward consciousness? Um, but you know, we know a whole class of phenomena that, in practice, can only ever happen in one direction in time. You know, and these are thermodynamic phenomena, right? These are phenomena that um, uh, sort of create waste heat, create entropy, right? That may take these little small, you know, microscopic, unknowable degrees of freedom and then amplify them to macroscopic scale. And in principle, those macroscopic records, you know, could could get uh, uh, could become microscopic again, right? Like, uh, uh, you know, if I make a measurement of a quantum state, you know, at least according to uh, the let's say many worlds quantum mechanics, you know, in principle, that measurement could always be undone. And yet, in practice, we never see those things happen for the same for basically the same reasons why we never see uh, an egg spontaneously unscramble itself or. Uh, uh, um, why we why we never see um, you know a shattered glass you know leap up to the table and reassemble itself right namely these are uh, uh, you know the, the, these would represent vastly improbable decreases of entropy okay and uh, so 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 the speculation was that you know maybe. Uh, this sort of uh, uh, irreversibility and this increase of entropy that we see in all the ordinary physical processes, and in particular in our own brains, maybe that's important to consciousness, right? Uh, or to what we like to think of as free will. I mean, we certainly don't have an example to say that it isn't. Um, but, you know, the, uh, the truth of the matter is I don't know. I mean, I set out... Uh, 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 all the thoughts that I had about it in this essay uh, five years ago, and then having written it, uh, I decided that uh, I had had enough of metaphysics. Uh, it made my head hurt too much, and I was going to go back to better defined questions in math and science. Yeah, in yeah. this information, physical. Yes. Physical yeah, mechanical. good. Yes. Um, you note that uh -huh. it, if a system crosses a Schwarzschild bound, it collapses into a black hole. Uh -huh. Do you think this could be used to put enough bound of the amount of consciousness in any given physical uh -huh. system? Well, uh, so I can decompose your question a little bit. So there is um, what what uh, quantum gravity considerations let you do. Uh, you know, it is believed today is put a universal bound on how much computation can be going on in a physical system in a in a of a given size. You know, and and also uh, how many bits can be stored there. And I can, you know, the bounds are precise enough that I can just tell you what they are. Uh, so it appears that uh, a, a physical system, uh, you know, that's, let's say, uh, surrounded by a sphere, you know, of a given surface area, can store at most about 10 to the 69 bits 
or rather 10 to the 69 cubits uh, per square meter of surface area of the uh, enclosing boundary. Um, and uh, it has a similar limit on, on how many uh, computational steps it can do over its, uh, its whole history. So, uh, so, so now I think uh, your question kind of reduces to the question, can we upper bound how much consciousness there is in a physical system, whatever that means, in terms of how much computation is going on in it, right? Or in terms of how many bits are there. Right? And that's a little hard for me to think about because, uh, you know, I don't know what we mean by amount of consciousness, right? Like, am I uh, uh, 10 times more conscious than a frog? Am I 100 times more conscious? I don't know. You know, I mean, s some of the time I feel less conscious than a frog, right? Uh, but, uh, you know, but, I'm, but I am sympathetic to the idea that there is some minimum of computational interestingness, you know, in any system that we would like to talk about as being conscious, right? So there is this, you know, ancient speculation of uh, panpsychism, right, that would uh, say that every, even every electron, every atom is conscious. Uh, and, you know, to me, like, that, that's fine. You can speculate that if you want. We know nothing to, you know, to rule it out. You know, there are no, like, physical laws uh, attached to consciousness that would tell us that that's impossible. The question is just, well, what does it buy you to suppose that? You know, what does it explain? And in the case of the electron, I'm not sure that it explains anything. Um, you know, now you could say, uh, does it even explain anything to suppose that we're conscious? Uh, but, um, you know, and, and maybe not, at least not for anyone beyond ourselves. You could say, you know, you know there's this uh, ancient uh, 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 conundrum that we each know that we're conscious, presumably, by our own subjective experience, and as far as we know, everyone else might be an automaton, right? Uh, you know, which, uh, you know, if you uh, really think about that uh, 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 consistently, could, you know, lead you to uh, become a solipsist. But, uh, 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 so Alan Turing, uh, in his famous 1950 paper that proposed the, the Turing test, uh, had this wonderful remark about it, which, is, uh, which was something like, A is liable to think that A uh, thinks while B does not, while B is liable to think B thinks but A does not. But, you know, in practice it is customary to adopt the polite convention that everyone thinks. Okay, so, you know, that was a very British way of putting it to me, right? And it's, uh, um, you know, we adopt the polite convention that solipsism is false, right? That, uh, you know, that, that people who can, you know, or any entities, let's say, that can exhibit complex behaviors or goal-directed intelligent behaviors that are like ours are probably conscious like we are. You know, and that's a criterion that would apply to other people. Uh, it would not apply to electrons, I don't think. And it's plausible that there is some bare minimum of computation in any entity to which that criterion would apply. Sabine Hoffen, somebody, I forget her name now. Uh, at, Sabine Hassenfelder, yeah. She had a scathing review of panpsychism recently, did you read? Uh, so I, um, I, I don't remember, I can't actually, I, I may have, I, I, yeah, recent. I can't, I can't, I can't, oh, it was very recent, then I, then I, then I probably didn't read it. I mean, I did, I did read an excerpt where she was saying that, like, panpsychism is, was she saying that it's experimentally ruled out? Yeah, like yeah, okay. If she was saying that, then I don't agree with that. Uh, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't even see uh, how you would experimentally rule out such a thing. I mean, you know, you're you're free to postulate as much consciousness as you want on the head of a pin, right? I would just say, well, it's, uh, um, you know, if it's not. Uh, uh, if it doesn't have an empirical consequence, if it's not affecting the world, if it's not affecting the behavior of that head of a pin, you know, in a way that uh, you can detect, then um, Occam's razor just itches us, uh, itches to slice it out from our description of the world. Uh, always, uh, uh, that's the way that I would put it, personally. Yeah, so I, I put a detailed critique of uh, integrated information theory, which is uh, uh, Giulio Tononi's, uh, you know, proposed uh, theory of consciousness on my blog, uh, and um, 
my critique was basically uh, so 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 Tononi, you know, comes up with this specific numerical measure that he calls phi, uh, and he claims that a system should be regarded as conscious if and only if uh, phi is large. Uh, now, the the actual definition of phi uh, has changed over time. You know, it's changed from from one paper to another, and it's not always clear how to apply it. And you know, there are many technical objections that could be raised against this criterion. But you know, what I respect uh, uh, about IIT is that at least it sticks its neck out, right? It proposes this very clear criterion, you know, or at least much, much clearer than competing accounts do, right? Uh, to tell you, you know, this is which physical systems you should regard as conscious and which not. Now, the, um, the danger of sticking your neck out is that it can get cut off, right? And, you know, indeed, I think that IIT is not only falsifiable, but falsified. Because as soon as this criterion is written down, uh, what the point I was making is that it is easy to construct physical systems, you know, that have enormous values of phi, much, much larger, you know, than a human has, and that yet that no, I don't think anyone uh, would really want to regard as as intelligent, you know, let alone conscious or even very interesting. Um, and uh, so my examples, you know, so basically, uh, phi is large if and only if your system is has a lot of interconnection, right? If it's very hard to decompose into two components that interact with each other only weakly. And um, uh, so you have a high degree of in information integration. And so, so my, the point of my counterexamples was to try to say, well, this cannot possibly be uh, the sole relevant criterion. Uh, because we, you know, a, a standard error correcting code, as is used, for example, on every compact disk, you know, has an, also has an enormous amount of information integration. Okay, but should we therefore say that you know every uh, uh, error correcting code, you know, that gets implemented in some you know piece of electronics is, is conscious, right? And um, even more than that, like a giant grid of logic gates just sitting there doing nothing would have a very large value of phi, right? And we can, we can multiply examples like that. Uh, and so now, uh, Tononi uh, then posted a big response to my critique. And his response was basically, well, you're just relying on intuition, right? Uh, you're just saying, oh, well, well, you know, these systems are not uh, 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 conscious because my intuition says that they are. Right? But you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, well, well, you know, why? You know, the, uh, that's parochial, right? Why should you expect a theory of consciousness to accord with your intuition? And he just then just went ahead and said, uh, yes, the error correcting code is conscious. Yes, the giant grid of exclusive OR gates is conscious. And if they have a thousand times larger value of phi than a brain, then they're a thousand times more conscious than a human is. Uh, so I, you know, the way I described it was he didn't just, you know, bite the bullet. He just devoured like a bullet sandwich with mustard. Okay, uh, you know, which was. Um, Kind of not what, what I was expecting, right? But uh, you know, but but now you know the the critique that you know that I'm saying that any scientific theory has to accord with intuition. I think I think that that is completely mistaken. I think that's really a mischaracterization of what I think, right? I mean, uh, I I'll be the very first to tell you that science has overturned common sense intuition over and over and over, right? I mean, uh, it, like like for example, temperature, you know, feels like an intrinsic quality of a, a, you know, of, of a, a material. It doesn't feel like it has anything to do with motion, with the atoms jiggling around at a certain speed. Okay, but we now know that it does. Uh, but, you know, when, when scientists first arrived at that modern conception of temperature in the 1800s, what was essential was that at least you know, that new criterion agreed with the old criterion that fire is hotter than ice. Right. So at least in the cases where we knew what we meant by hot or cold, you know, the new definition agreed with the old definition. Right. And then the new definition went on. It went further to tell us many counterintuitive things that we didn't know before. Right. But at least it, you know, it, 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 it sort of reproduced the way in which we were using words previously. OK. Um, you know, even when when um, um, 
uh, uh, when, when, when Copernicus and Galileo, right, discovered that the Earth is, uh, uh, you know, orbiting the sun, right? You know, the new theory was able to account for our observation that we were not flying off the Earth, right? It, uh, you know, it's a, that's exactly what you would expect that to have happened, you know, even in, a, in an account, you know, because of these uh, new principles of inertia and so on, okay? Uh, um, but, you know, if a theory of consciousness says that, uh, you know, this giant, like, blank wall or this, you know, grid is, uh, is uh, highly, highly conscious, just sitting there doing nothing, right, whereas, like, you know, even like, like a simulated, you know, mich you know uh, uh, or an AI or a simulated person that passes the Turing test would not be conscious, you know, if it's like... Uh, uh, organized in such a way that it happens to have a low value of phi, right? I say, well, um, okay, if it, um, uh, 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 you, you still have to, the burden is on you to prove to me that this uh, uh, new, you know, this phi notion that you have defined has anything whatsoever to do with what I was calling consciousness. Right. You haven't, you know, you haven't even shown me any cases where they agree with each other where, and where I should therefore extrapolate to the, case, to the hard cases, the ones where I lack an intuition. Like, you know, at what point is an embryo conscious or when is an AI conscious or whatever. Right. Uh, I mean, it's like, you know, the theory seems to have gotten wrong, like the only things that it could have possibly gotten right. And so then at that point, uh, you know, I think there is nothing to compel a skeptic to say that, you know, this particular quantity fee has anything to do with consciousness.